What's a biblical event that you wish you could have been there to see? I want to hear from you. Leave it down in the comments. Welcome to The Whole Truth, everyone, where I am taking you through the entire Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation without skipping anything. Even if this journey takes us a while, we are in it for the long haul. We are going to go through the entire Bible. In Leviticus chapter 9, we see the confirmation of the priest. So we have seen the priest as they were consecrated, but now that is confirmed in Leviticus chapter nine. And it's a pretty awesome way to be confirmed, to say, yes, God approves of what you've done. Let's read it together. Leviticus chapter nine, and we'll pick up in verse one. It came to pass on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. And he said to Aaron, take for yourselves a young bull as a sin offering and a ram as a burnt offering without blemish and offer them before the Lord. And to the children of Israel, you shall speak saying, take a kid of the goats as a sin offering and a calf and a lamb, both of the first year without blemish as a burnt offering, also a bull and a ram as a peace offering to sacrifice before the Lord. This is the part I want you to catch. And a grain offering mixed with oil. For today, the Lord will appear to you. How awesome is that? Moses says, okay, Israel, we've consecrated your priest. We need the priest and we need Israel together. And we're going to make some sacrifices. There's going to be a peace offering and a sin offering and a burnt offering. These offerings need to be made. First, you've got the priest. They need to make offerings for themselves. Then they need to make offerings for the people or make sacrifices for the people. But the point I want to get to is where Moses says to them, for today, you will see the Lord. And so what we see next are these sacrifices. Let's talk about those first. We'll need to read them. It's Leviticus 9 and verse 5. So they brought what Moses commanded before the tabernacle of meeting. And all the congregation drew near and stood before the Lord. Then Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commanded you to do. And the glory of the Lord will appear to you. And Moses said to Aaron, go to the altar, offer your sin offering and your burnt offering and make atonement for yourself and for the people. Offer the offering of the people and make atonement for them as the Lord commanded. Aaron therefore went to the altar and killed the calf of the sin offering, which was for himself. Then the sons of Aaron brought the blood to him and he dipped his finger in the blood and put it on the horns of the altar and poured the blood out at the base of the altar. But the fat, the kidneys, the fatty lobe from the liver and the sin, uh, of the sin offering, he burned on the altar as the Lord commanded Moses. The flesh and the, and the hide he burned with fire outside the camp. And he killed the burnt offering, and Aaron's sons presented him the blood, which he sprinkled all around the altar. Then he presented a burnt offering to him with, his, with its pieces and head, and he burned them on the altar. And he washed the entrails and legs and burned them with the burnt offering on the altar. Then he brought the people's offering and took the goat, which was the sin offering for the people and killed it and offered it for sin like the first one. And he brought the burnt offering and offered it according to the prescribed manner. And then he brought the grain offering and took a handful of it and burned it on the altar besides uh, the burnt sacrifice of the morning. He also killed the bull and the ram as the sacrifices of the peace offerings which were for the people. And Aaron's sons presented to him the blood, which he sprinkled all around the, the on the altar, and the fat from the bull and from the ram, the fatty tail, which covers the entrails, and the kidney and the fatty lobe attached to the liver. And they put the fat on the breast. Then he burned the fat on the altar. But the breast and the right thigh, Aaron waved as a wave offering before the Lord, as Moses had commanded. Okay, so just for a minute, before we read this last portion, I want you to understand that there were sacrifices to be made for Aaron and for his sons as the priest. Now, this becomes a daily part of the priestly life, that they have to make sacrifices for themselves. And on the great day of atonement, they have to make sacrifices for themselves. Now, why would that make any point for us today? Like, we just keep seeing this over and over, like another sacrifice, another sacrifice. As a matter of fact, in this case, in chapter 9, 
the priest, they weren't actually confirmed as priests yet. They'd gone through all of the rituals. They were born into the priesthood of Aaron, and they had gone through the rituals, but there was still not the confirmation. That's coming in just a moment. They had gone through this consecration ceremony of seven days. Seven days they had made sacrifices every day. They had blood from these animals sprinkled on them every day. They took blood from the animals and put them on the horns of the altar and poured the blood out around the altar every day, another sacrifice. And now after seven straight days of sacrificing, after seven straight days of consecration, on the eighth day, they have to make another sacrifice. What in the world? Actually, I think it makes a pretty good point. And that is, as the Bible teaches us later in the book of Hebrews, that the blood of bulls and the blood of goats and the blood of heifers, it could never fully take away our sin. They had to be made over and over and over and over again. As a matter of fact, pay attention to this. They had been the priest, they, they the priest, had been in the tabernacle for seven days. How in the world could they have sinned in those seven days? What did they do that they needed to make a sin offering if for the last seven days they've been at the tabernacle being sprinkled with blood, being sprinkled with blood mixed with oil, going through all of these ritual sacrifices? What did they do that now they had to sacrifice an animal? But see, that's actually the point. The the blood of a bull or, or the blood of an animal could never actually pay the price for sin. Okay, let me flip this around and say it the other way. In other words, it's not like, oh, you stole something, so because you stole something, now the blood of this animal completely pays for that and it's totally washed away. It never never has to be brought up again because this animal died. Now, the fact of the matter is there we, we are sinners. Nothing is changing the fact that we are sinners when it comes to an animal sacrifice. God was using those animal sacrifices to point us to Christ. As a matter of fact, even the day of the week that this is happening, this is now the eighth day or the first day of the next week. For one whole week, the priest had been consecrated. Now on the eighth day or the first day of the following week, now they are going to be confirmed. And isn't that the same day that Christ rose from the grave? Jesus offered himself. You see, all the sacrifices were pointing to Jesus And even this very day that the priests are confirmed is pointing to Jesus. Jesus, who when he came here to this earth, he was not our high priest or acting as our high priest when he was on this earth. He came and he was our sacrifice. He paid for our sins. But then after he himself became the lamb, he is the lamb of God who died for our sins, the spotless lamb who gave his own blood. He rose from the grave three days later. And after he has rose from the grave, after he he arose, from death, when death couldn't hold him anymore when he arose, now he has ascended to the right hand of the Father. And even today, that is where he is as our mediator. The Bible says there's one God and one mediator between God and man. It's the man, Christ Jesus. That Jesus Christ is now our high priest. He is acting on our behalf. Remember, that's what the priest did. When the people needed to to get to God, so to speak, they went through the priest. Now Jesus is the high priest after he rose from the dead. And when did he do that? On the first day of the week. Did you keep up with that? Jesus is both the sacrifice and the high priest. And that's what all of this is pointing to. You see, the blood of the animals could never pay all the price. So even if you'd gone seven days of making sacrifices, it still wasn't enough. Even if they went thousands of years making sacrifices, it still wasn't enough because those animals were never meant to pay the price of sin. It was a way of atonement and it was a tutor. It was a teacher to show us Christ. I hope that makes sense to you. Now, look at what happens. After seven days of consecration, now on the day of confirmation, we see these animals are sacrificed again, both for Aaron and his sons and all the people. Now look. It's verse 22, Leviticus chapter nine, verse 22. Then Aaron lifted his hand toward the people, 
blessed them, came down from the from offering the sin offering and the burnt offering, the peace offering. And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of meeting. Now watch this. And they came out and blessed the people. And then the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. And fire came out from before the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat and the fat on the altar. When all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. Here they are at the tabernacle, this tent. They've been going through this process. Remember for them, this was all brand new. You've heard about sacrifices. If you've been in the Bible, you've heard about sacrifices for a while. But for these people, this is brand new. This tabernacle, this place where they can go and meet God, this is a new concept. And now to have this priestly line of only the sons of Aaron, that's a new concept. And by the way, it'll be brought up later when their line is questioned. You see, what happened after they were uh, after they were consecrated is now they're confirmed. Aaron and his sons are now confirmed. There's been seven days of consecration. Now the sacrifices were made for this day, the eighth day. Aaron and Moses went into the tabernacle, and when they came out, the glory of the Lord appeared to them. Now you might ask me and say, Pastor Justin, what is the glory of the Lord? I don't know. Like, what physical manifestation did that take? I do not know. My supposition would be light. I would suppose that the light got really bright, the glory of the Lord, that this light was shining around them. And as that happened, in my mind at least, I think almost instantaneously, fire consumes the burnt offering, this fat that is on the altar. So it's their roasting. You know, there's a, like a grill. It's their roasting on the fire. Now, where did this fire come from? Is this a fireball that came down from heaven? Maybe. Some people want to make it a little more on the natural, and they like to say that maybe it was a lightning bolt. Maybe a lightning bolt came down and struck the meat and the the fat that was there on the altar. Other people seem to think that because it came from the Lord, that it was from the inside of the tabernacle, because that's where the Lord dwelt in the holiest of holies, that that fire came out from the tabernacle. Others think that maybe it was just a spontaneous combustion, that it just spontaneously just erupted and, and burned up, and then it was gone. Of any of those, I don't know what to say, which one is right or which one isn't right. What I do know is that the Lord was confirming what he had done in Aaron as the priestly line. The Lord was saying, this is the way I want it. Aaron and his sons, they're supposed to be the priest. And I'm confirming that by showing you with this fire that is consuming the 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 offering. Now, stick with this illustration. If the sacrifice is a sacrifice in place of the person. In other words, a substitution where, let's use me, where I should have died, this animal was dying or died. This animal died in my place, right? And and what does fire represent in the Bible? Judgment. You see, God is in his confirmation of Aaron and his sons. He is confirming by pouring out his judgment on this sacrifice, which is exactly what Christ did for you. When Jesus Christ died for your sins, God confirmed that. Jesus was hanging on the cross. And remember that Jesus, who could have called for legions of angels to come down and take him off of the cross. When Jesus, he didn't, nobody could kill him. He said he laid down his own life. When Jesus hung on the cross and he died, remember that he cried out and he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He cries out to God, why have you forsaken me? And then the Bible says he gives up the ghost. He, he died. And Jesus, when he died, he actually died. But you know what happened too? God confirmed that. He tore the temple veil from the top to the bottom, making the way to God completely open. Jesus has made passage to the Father. And God has confirmed that in his own son, Jesus. Jesus took your judgment on himself when he died on the cross. And that's the way that God wanted it to be. In Hebrews chapter one and verse one later in the Bible, the the word tells us this, that God who in diverse manners and different ways that he spoke in times past through the prophets, but in these last days, he has spoken to us through his son, Jesus. You know, I've never got to see fire come down out of heaven and consume an offering on an altar, though I think that would have been an amazing sight. But I tell you what I do get, I get to know God through his son, Jesus, who he has sent to die for me. And though I've never seen fire come out of heaven, 
I've seen the work of the Lord in my own life, and I can give testimony to that and say, I am sure that God's method, that God's way, the only way is his son Jesus, just the way he told us. All right, I hope that you enjoyed today's message, and I will see you tomorrow with Leviticus chapter 10. I'll see you then.